so you press you can see air sam1 sam2 triple a okay then this one when you press this light will come on um, all right all of them uh, light up with this one being a different color hey guys welcome back to simpit academy so today we look at uh, the CMSC panel and the light indicators so this one you need an LCD uh, buttons and um, these are supposed to be uh, potential meters um, but I use um, encoder because the body is smaller okay for all these five buttons you just use something like this and then uh, print and stick it on because I don't have a uh, this um, laser engraver so everything I do is 3d printed all right sometimes the text are embossed sometimes uh, those that you push I prefer to print because if it's embossed when you press on it it's a bit painful so uh, anyway most of the places where space is tight um, I will I will replace uh, parts with encoders okay um, then we have three lights here this one the missile warning is red and then these two here are green okay and I move this sign from here over because um, it's very tight okay um, this whole thing was very tricky um, the space even this is um, right basically in the middle but the, the buttons are height are bigger than the LCD display so one thing to note is that this is a 2002 all right a lot of people I see in the forum and on YouTube they they go about getting the 1602 then they realize that oh you know it doesn't display the whole thing or there's no space you know there's no space here when this is fully displayed so uh, for both CMSC and CMSP you need the 2002 all right good thing this one is uh, cheap just a couple of bucks if you use um, the other two type that I showed in my very first video those VFD and the other type uh, can't remember the name those are a lot more expensive um, like 40 bucks or something so anyway uh, this is the ID one so the text um, it's split the panel is split into two um, the top part is all the text and the cutout right and this is like just 2 mm thick and you don't need any top or bottom um, to like um, recess okay now this one you need to place the LCD and um, a lot of tricks here so the top part where you put the push buttons um, you need to recess the top down right so that uh, when you put this over um, the top part of the push button is not like pushing this up you this needs to sit flush then same thing here okay so start with a panel um, this is a bit taller than most people build it uh, but really the space height and width wise everything is very tight so um, next I have holes the holes are not for the the four legs okay the holes are for this um, like round packs that you just push and it helps secure this thing from moving i don't try to hold down the push button using the legs okay the legs i will cut out uh, openings so you have um like for each button you have a pair of packs okay vertically and then the legs are sitting at the sides okay like this so um five pairs of holes for the packs 
Then next, um, the holes for um, the rotaries um, and the square holes. Most people, I think, they do like a 3mm square, which I find a bit too small. Um, it, so I make it 4mm, which is slightly bigger than the usual, according to the uh, picture. So mine is not to scale. Basically, I just make it bigger to make the light more obvious. So um, at the back, you need to recess to make room for the LCD panel. Okay, it needs to protrude. Um, and also you need to later recess this as well. Okay, after we recess this, we recess the push buttons. Um, oh, this is from the top. I think we mentioned that already. Then we fillet the corners and then I recess this some more um, for the display part to protrude. Okay, but at the back, there's some recess for the body. Um, then we have some cutout. Okay, the legs. If you, you can you can bend them, but they need to protrude anyway for the wires. So um, I cut out vertical slots. Okay, for the legs. Um, here, again, the slots you can widen it more. Uh, especially after you solder the wire and add string tube to hold it in place stuff like that um this is still quite tight okay you can you can bro uh, widen this a bit and even at the side um i try to cut out opening for the legs to go this way more this way and then down all right so um recess for um the encoder bodies um, if not, it will the shaft will not protrude enough for you to um, tighten the nut. So you need to recess from the bottom to let the body in a bit. So 16 is just fine. 14 or 15, uh, it's too tight for the body. Okay. So again, you see, notice that you cannot make it too big. Uh, too big, it will touch this part here. Uh, or the top here and then the body will show at the side so um, a lot of tricks moving around then I also um, recessed the, the in the front the holes are square but at the back I have um, round recesses for the LEDs um, the, the elongated you know the, the long uh, LEDs so protrude it uh, recess it um, until almost doesn't cut through the square but just one two mm um, behind all right so then this is the top panel uh, you have to align the position exactly the same as the bottom um, I think 10 mm kind of works but um, Maybe you can make it slightly bigger because sometimes you know the button it, it does get a bit stuck. So maybe 10.1, 10.2 would be better. I don't want to expose too much. Um then you see other things. So anyway, um it works for now. So the you you have to cut out, see the lights for the buttons to go through the encoders. All right, I didn't bother draw, um, drawing those lines as most people do because the display, I uh, when I did it, I didn't really know how far the display will go. Anyway, you kind of understand the top part. Uh, some people have like individual three cutouts. I just have one big cutout. All right, the jammer, MWS. Um, this one, the text, if you use the, the slash uh, character, it will be by nature too thin um, when you emboss it. So I individually have a slanted uh, rectangle uh, as the, the slash. Okay, um, that's about it for this. Um, now the display. Okay, 
So this 2002 uh, is an I squared C um, display. So see, four pins only, right? You have the clock, the data, the, the positive and the ground. So it's very easy to wire, okay? I, I enlarge this. So um, positive, negative, and then here SCL, SDA, all right? Uh, for the mega at least it's always here 2021 so wiring is so simple um this one you need those dupont connectors um but i creamed my own and i find that they lose connection very easily or they are very finicky you just touch it and then it like blinks and get error whatever so you can try soldering and then protect it with string tube so that the um, um, connection is more secure. All right, so they have four colors. I chose this one, uh, which is the only one with white uh, text. Everything, the other three are all black text, which I don't like. So uh, blue background. And then uh, we have to wire the rotaries and the buttons, right? So for those who are new to this kind of Arduino wiring stuff, you can look at uh, my very first video. I explain wiring all kinds of switches, buttons, encoders, potentiometers, which is analog, um, and, and output displays. All right, so uh, this is a different series, right? We are in the A10 series. Uh, this is the F15 uh, playlist, so check it out. Next, um, I've covered this many times, um, but in case you guys haven't watched the other videos, for LEDs, when it is um, for this kind of, these three, they are individual LEDs, so you have to wire this, where, wire it this way, the resistor on the positive side, the, the longer leg, okay, the anode, this is cathode, um, the longer leg is the positive, then you run a resistor, uh, you don't just run it like this, okay, you will burn out. Put a resistor and um, then to the, the positive goes to the pin, all right, for LEDs. It doesn't go to your 5 volt or 3 volt, okay. Um, those are for output displays. So for individual LEDs, you go to the pin um, like this. So the best way... Uh, I've explained, I tried like many different ways and if you just solder them, they break easily. Even the legs of the LEDs break, the legs of the uh, resistor also break. So what I do is I use this kind of um, connector and one line is coming from the LED. You connect, you know, one wire to the LED and then put here and then the other side just clip on the resistor it's quite tight it doesn't drop out then the other line you just go to your number okay your pin so every time i have leds i do this kind of stuff and it has worked out great so now for the code um i mentioned this in um two other videos so macros so new dcs bios version unless you like haven't updated your DCS BIOS version, you will get a lot of this kind of alphanumeric 0x something something. Um, these are the old code. So then if you download the new code, which I did for, for this one, um, you notice that the text is, um, the code is text, okay? It's no longer this kind of alphanumeric. So when you have any LEDs, um, that is like this a macro you need to your when you install this as BIOS you will have this file okay addresses.h you have to declare the path it's always in your saved games okay scripts DCS BIOS whatever now we no longer have the open beta just DCS so uh, it, this besides your name you will have this saved game DCS scripts whatever so copy this uh, declare it 
then any macro it will be addressed. If you don't want to do macro, don't want to do this, you want to find the old code, let's say you see this and you're curious and instead of downloading super old versions, you can look up board. Okay, board, um, it's very useful for troubleshooting. I've learned to use it and learned to like it. Uh, in real time, when you uh, have board open and you press, you will see your switch and your display uh, values change in real time. Uh, helps with debugging. So that's cool. So this is the code for the display part. Okay, um, whether you are using OLED, um, any kind of LCD, I2C, it will, you will use this LCD I2C.h and you have to declare, um, you know, 22 or 16 to something like that. And then these are standard DCS BIOS code, right? You just need to set the cursor in the right place. This is uh, first row to the left, right? This is second row, um, row zero, row one, okay? And then this is the column number on the right for the chair flag. So this is code for the display. And then here is the code for all the switches, um, the buttons, the rotaries. So by default, um, all potential media codes will be given in the simple um, version, then you in DCS BIOS, you have to, if you don't want to use potential meter, you will not see this until you switch to advanced uh, mode, then you'll see the code for encoders, okay? Um, then these are standard uh, buttons and then L LEDs. Okay, here you see the LEDs are all the old format. Um, again, if they give you text instead of alphanumeric, you have to declare this and you know in order for, for the macro to work. Or else you cannot even compile the code. So next we look at front indicator lights. So um, they are given in pairs, right? Two on the left, two on the right side. So if you see my, if you saw my previous video for the landing panel, I explained in detail how to build this thing, um, this LED holder. This time is special in the sense I combine two into one. So this is instead of 29, I make it slightly bigger to fit the, the hole that has already been cut out um, in the past. So you place both, you have some a divider in between, and these are uh, like a ledge to sit the L, the, the display uh, panel, okay? Um, just, this is only like half an M, uh, I think, or one mm um, on the side. You don't even need it on the here, just the, the, uh, the two ends like this and then the three mm thick um light panel just put on top and it will sit okay and then you have the holes here now i started with this and these are very directional these are quite bright too uh, but these are even brighter and the best part about this dome shape thing is um it spreads um like a wide angle so um the lights the text is more evenly um lit up uh, these are called like piranha uh, floods something. All right. So anyway, all these are dirt cheap, um, a bag of 20 or 50 for a few bucks. So um, note that if you are using three, it's like the single one. Um, when you have three or more, you do in parallel all the... Um, all the ground legs together, okay? Uh, solder them together, then all the positive one together. If you do two, then you have to do in series. This is in parallel, okay? Series means positive to negative, positive to negative, stuff like that. So you always end with a resistor 
on the positive side before you run it to the pin okay and this time I have made the rim a bit wider um, than usual so um, the text panel okay um, measure I, I think this is a bit short so there's some light bleed so measure this and then just write the text if you don't know how to see text uh, how to create this look at my many other videos especially in the beginning ones you just create the text and emboss it up uh, 1 mm okay then you spray paint you 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 print this thing uh, in clear PLA most stuff I print in black so this one you print in clear and then spray paint the whole thing and then use a file and then just file away the top okay then the light will be exposed uh, everything else will be black if it's not black enough then you cover it with more paint okay um, that's it this is um, quite simple all right this one uh, it's a different color um, orangey or yellow then the others are green so code for the four LEDs are here all right so with the CMSC and the front indicators all shown the steps let's take a look at them in action okay guys we are in the A10C um, with the CMSC uh, done and the four front light indicators so the this is how we do it uh, this is not functional but the top one the jammer button is so you press you can see air SAM1 SAM2 AAA okay then this one when you press this light will come on um, this two this one I don't know what uh, will when there's unknown threat you press and then you will light up or you will light up by itself I'm not sure but the light test doesn't turn on all these lights okay you will turn on these indicators so basically you turn the knob um, for audio and brightness um, and the three buttons are done so um, having this working is cool so next we look at the indicators all right all of them uh, light up with this one being a different color so in the next video we will complete now this one just have a cover um, doesn't have the lights yet next video we will look at NMSP um, this digital no this uh, UHF repeater I will use OLED and do it too so coming along um, the last one will be the UFC okay then I will have the pass through go up a bit to cover that part as well then we are done and just hotels and this alone we can um, do most of the flying so if you guys appreciate um, the effort my effort in um, showing you step by step every panel explaining how it's done showing you you know them in action um, please support my channel and um, subscribe and like the video thank you guys for watching